First and foremost, I'm going to start things off by making a simple statement. Ladies and gentlemen, I love hip hop. <laughs> Ever since I was a child growing up in the 1980s and 90s in Prince George's County, Maryland, I had to find some type of way to get my map rap music fixed. It could either be through one of the local radio stations, WPGC or WKYS. Um, it was through scrounging together my allowance money and buying CDs and cassettes at various places, from Kit Mill Music to The Wiz, and truth to be told, sometimes The Bootleg Man. And later on, when I was in college at Rutgers University as a student, and I got really into DJing and into radio hosting, I started buying vinyl a lot going to places like Fat Beats, Dance Tracks, and more. And by the time I was really getting my radio show established and I was able to start receiving music myself, certain release weeks felt like Christmas and my birthday at the same time. Because I was just getting all of this awesome music I already loved, and I was getting it in advance. It felt great. Even to this day, I remember the three cassette tapes I played until they literally snapped. That would be Public Enemy's Fear of a Black Planet, Camp Lowe's Uptown Saturday Night, <clears throat> pardon me, and also, <clears throat> well, one of them other ones actually was A Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauders. Yes. Now, hip hop is to me just another form of what I call American classical music. It's a fusion of jazz, soul, funk, reggae, and more. And it's made some pretty nice climbs from humble beginnings. However, like anything that has had humble beginnings, sometimes it goes through a share of ups and downs. On the up end, hip hop is now internationally known. It's a brand that sells everything from music to clothing and more. It's something that is literally everywhere. It could be the soundtrack to relax and revolt, to conform to society, or push, you know, whatever you don't like about society to the side. Basically, hip hop is one of those things that in one way, shape, or form, whether you're watching TV, searching out your favorite blog, or whatever else, it's all around us. It's going nowhere anytime fast or anytime soon. But like other American classical music art forms, it's going through a little bit of a change right now. Hip hop is going through a severe midlife crisis. <laughs> sometimes it's a little ill-fitting, sometimes it feels a little strange, kind of like that old man in the club who you, is holding a champagne bottle, and you're like, why are you doing that right now? Why don't you adapt to your own age and other types of things? However, as a lifelong fan and as somebody in the music industry, I think we can save hip hop. And I'm just going to break down in this talk just a few ways how I think that this can occur. But before we get into that and look at hip hop's bigger and brighter future, we got to address a few things from its past and its present. Ever since its beginnings in the Bronx, hip hop has had, to me, what is a classic American pull up by your bootstraps type of story when you didn't necessarily have a whole bunch of resources and things, but you were still able to reach success and make things happen. Hip hop, to me, is truly an authentic form of controlled chaos. When you had young kids in the school system who didn't have certain things via their arts programs, instead of maybe using a traditional instrument like, you know, drums or a guitar or whatever else, you had a whole bunch of young kids get into getting samplers, beat machines, mics, turntables, to use already existing kinds of music to make a whole different kind of music. And in terms of artistic creativity, we're not talking just about MCs and DJs. We're talking about hip hop businessmen and women who invented things like street teams and mixtapes to do promotion. We're talking about dancers who got into breaking and b-boying. We're talking about artists who got into graffiti. This type of organic authenticity expanded from the five boroughs of New York City and the state of New Jersey to all different types of places. And of course, when anybody sees a trend, especially corporate America, you know what happens. They go ahead, they hop on board, and they try to go ahead and run with it. Now, one of the things I think a lot of people didn't expect was hip hop wasn't going to be a temporary trend. It's lasted for quite some time. And I think that's pretty awesome for something that people would have looked at going away like beta tapes or ColecoVision 
or slap bracelets. <laughs> However, with corporate America embracing hip hop, one of the things that happened is instead of some hip hoppers themselves defining what realness is, they've allowed corporations to say what realness is in regards to what is the best way for you to go ahead and engage in artistic expression. That's not going to be sustainable. That's not going to work. And it's going to give you a whole bunch of cookie cutter music that everybody's going to get tired of listening to. Same thing that's happened on some levels to jazz and rock and roll. In my eyes, it's time to go ahead and break that chain. Now, I'm not talking about that there's a lack of creatives in hip hop. They've always been around, whether it's from the underground to the mainstream. However, one of the things that we had to go ahead and look at is a mental change in terms of how to keep hip hop creatively strong and sustainable. And I think there's three main groups that's going to make that happen. It's going to be the music artists themselves, the music distributors, and the fans. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and address the music artist. Music artists need to know their own creative self-worth right from the get-go. You can't have somebody else tell you what's valuable and what's not in your own terms of self-expression. You got to embrace what you do and go hard and work hard towards that. And with that, you can't expect a corporation to pull you up from the bootstraps, give you a microphone, take you into a pretty studio, and you're going to go ahead and make a hit. You got to do what the people back in the 70s and 80s, and to a degree, the 90s did. You got to have your own strong do-it-yourself mentality to go ahead and get success. And one of the biggest tools that we have right now to go and make that happen is the internet. There's no excuse right now for any music artist. To not take control of their own career in some way, shape, or form. We all know about the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, etc., where we can actually directly reach out to fans and even maybe fellow music artists to collaborate with. But you also have your own distribution systems, Bandcamp, SoundCloud. You have ways that you can record and book your own gigs: Reaper, Mobile Roadie, Sonic Bids, and the music business. You got to be able to learn the music business to be able to make money in music. And also, there's things like governmental music policy that you can learn about as well. And the few sites listed: Future of Music, Hypebot,、um, Harry Allen site, Rap Coalition, etc. And if you actually want to reach out to fans who may like your music, you don't have to depend on three or four major distributors anymore. You don't got to depend on mainstream radio all the time or mainstream TV all the time. Reach out to all the different types of blogs and other types of things that can actually appeal to what you do. You can't complain about a system that doesn't support you if you're not mentally supporting yourself. Next up, we got to talk to the labels. Music labels. I know times are hard. We're all going through economic issues and stuff like that. My wallet is not exactly the thickest with a whole lot of money. However, I know that I have to adapt to make a living, and with the labels, they need to be able to go ahead and do the same thing. Yes, there's going to be a lack of sales from the 1990s and the 2000s, but one of the things that labels have to do is change with the times. You're not going to be able to go back to a pre-Napster period. I have a five-year-old cousin who knows how to search out songs and find a way to get those songs. I'm not advocating this. I'm just saying how things go. <laughs> now, with all of that, especially now that we have an abstract way of buying music via MP3s, you got to have your label be known for releasing quality. Not a quantity of stuff. Have your A and Rs actually take a strong role again in terms of crafting what a music artist does with their singles and albums. Don't just release every random audio trend to the point where people just get bored of what you do. Have your label be known for being a standard bearer. Be like the Def Jam back in the 1980s. Be like the loud music of the 1990s, and people will go ahead and buy your music. Also, 360 deals and stuff like that. That's only going to work so far, too. Find a way to have your music artist actually get money that they deserve by working with you, and have everybody be able to eat. Lastly, hip hop fans. We can go ahead and talk about music labels are crazy, music artists are crazy, but you know what? You're the standard bearer of what both sides do. Hip hop kind of sucks because of you. What you need to do, fans, is to speak with your two strongest and most powerful weapons: your wallet and your voices. With your wallet, it costs a lot of money and a lot of time to make really, really good music. And those music artists can't survive off of the free mixtape downloads they give a blog or something every once in a while. 
when they're putting out different merchandise, CDs, vinyl, shirts, whatever, pay for it. When they're having a show around your way and you can go, pay that ticket and go. Because for your average independent hip hop artist, the only way they're gonna get looked at by a bigger distributor is that they're gonna have to show a track record that somebody actually values what they do. This is where your voice comes into play with your money. In terms of your basic voice itself, you now can be the independent media that is going to support those artists. Make up a blog, do a podcast, go ahead and you know, support that college radio station, community station that actually plays more than the same 15 songs on the hour, by the hour. You know, this type of thing really comes at a big personal cause when you want to be a creative and make money as being a creative. So respect that and let people know if you don't like the music, it sucks, okay? If you love it, it's wonderful. And all these things will help make wonderful and positive change. In conclusion, I got a little bit of food for thought for everybody. We're at the stage now where because people on multiple music genres aren't selling huge amounts, this is the best time ever to be a truly independent-minded artist and creative. In the hip-hop world, you have groups like Slaughterhouse, Odd Future, and many, many more who have gone ahead and had top charting positions in the Billboard Top 100 and the rap charts, meaning that if you actually do what you're supposed to, just be yourself and craft that audience around what you are, everything else is naturally going to come to you. You don't have to compromise what you do because you can have all the marketing dollars and everything else behind you in the world. That's not gonna go ahead and make positive change. You are the change. So with that, there's a Queens MC called Nas who a few years back had an album title slash declaration, Hip Hop is Dead, because he put forth a lot of frustration in regard to how he felt the direction of hip hop was going. Now, with everything, if all three of these sides really take a hold and do what the old school hip hop MCs, DJs, and other people did, be bold with their message, be bold with being independent, and just be authentic to yourself while working hard, we can all go ahead and make a better future and have hip hop's life be good. My name is Mary Nichols, and I thank you very kindly for your time and consideration. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.